All right, this chaotic crypto will be defy tyranny. I want to do a late night kind of uh, recap of what's going on. Look at the charts a little bit. The uh, basically we're still kind of in our same range. Nothing big. Uh, there's still room for downside, but there's also a lot of reasons to think we're going to start going up here pretty soon. Uh, Jerome Powell's comments to the Fed, they're pretty dovish. They weren't really hawkish. I'll say they're middle ground. So I would say just look at the charts. I think things are kind of recharging, getting ready for the next leg up. Uh, 30 to 42K has kind of still been my main, uh, that's been my, my target. And uh, just looking at the charts, uh, on, on the daily, we're completely bottomed out on the stochastic RSI. Usually when you're on the RSI this long on the bottom, it's just a matter of time before you get a big bounce up. And then the last time we were in this kind of a range, like we're real low, real boring. Apparently the Bollinger Bands have never been this uh, constricted, which means the price action has just been very, very boring. Um, we'll zoom out again to see when, when was it this boring for this amount of time? We're looking at moments before a big pull up. Uh, Kind of in here, you know, let's see uh, what else we got. We had a lot of boring action, kind of this kind of area. Now we could be looking at something like this and time wise, it does kind of make sense. June, July was pretty bullish kind of, but then we went kind of down and consolidated a little bit more. We, we didn't really have this kind of exuberant rally uh, in our current situation. Obviously it's a little bit more methodical, but you know, we could just go boring, you know, for a few more months and maybe go back down to 23 K. Um, I, I was still targeting like 30 to 42. I, I want to see us kind of go up and get another um, push up. I'm thinking that we're something in the lines of this area. Because we did break our previous 30k, but then we kind of came back down. Is uh, let's let's take let's take a look, look at this area and compare it to this other area. Let's see, yeah, and it's 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 relatively similar, right? It's relatively similar. I'm not really seeing the exuberance, really. I'm not seeing the crazy. Yeah, I'm just not seeing the crazy you know, exuberance out there. So, you know, I, I think we'll still probably go up. But, you know, there's also a possibility where we just go sideways for a bit longer up until the end of the year into the halving. So, yeah, regardless, we're still in this accumulation zone. So good deals out there. Absolutely. But it's always good to have dry powder so things get a little bit dicey. Let's see. Take a look at the Dixie. The Dixie has gained some strength. But I really have a hard time thinking that this fake out, that this dropout was fake. But you know, maybe the US dollar does gain strength. Maybe it maybe it does pop out of this situation that we're in. Seems unlikely, but I think it would be more likely that we hit this and fall back down. But this has been a lot of this has been a lot of a big bounce, so something to look at. Looking back at this, the weekly isn't really telling me a whole lot. It is saying that it's kind of slowing down, but maybe if we, as long as we don't cross below this red officially, I think we'll head on back to the oversold conditions over the next month or so. I'm still expecting September to be kind of red, though. Into August, September. Maybe part of October were kind of bad. Then November, December, we get a Santa Claus rally. And that, that's kind of like the macro, what I'm thinking. Uh, one coin I keep on talking about, Crypto.com coin, there, there's some really good news coming out. Apparently, they're expanding their services worldwide to some other places. and It's just a coin that's extremely undervalued. And to get to the all-time high, it's, almost, it's like a 30x. So... <laughs> I mean, a 10x, yeah, a 20x easy to all time high, and it might go three to five dollars from there. It's almost like a like a Cardano of last cycle. So I mean, imagine you know, a thousand dollars and you get forty, sixty thousand, eighty thousand dollars, and something like that. It's certainly possible.
not financial advice, and please feel free to smash the likes, leave a comment below, subscribe. This is a, I've had this channel for a few years, but I've really been really trying to focus on it, do a little more content, paying a little more attention. Uh, as the bull market gets more, gets more heated over the next year or two, I plan to do more, but being that it's a bear market, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people watching my stuff, so you know, bear with me, but uh, we'll build this thing and hopefully build a nice community. So appreciate the support. Hopefully I'm giving some decent, decent alpha, as they say. You know, Filecoin's another one, just like, <laughs> it's like a 30x to its all-time high. I'm not saying that's going to happen exactly, but it's a, this is a use case, you know, storage platform for crypto, you know, blockchain. So I think it's, the, the other competitor, um, something else I wanted to look at, you know, within each subsector of crypto, you should probably have two or three cryptos, uh, preferably three. That way you get, you know you have a good chance of breaking into that industry, right? So if you're a metaverse bot guy, you might want to have engine and mana, maybe sand or wax or um, what are some other ones. There's a lot. There's a lot of metaverse tokens. <laughs> um you know, if you're into exchanges, you want to have Uniswap, you want to have, you know, CRO, you want to have GMX, DYDX, infrastructure. Uh, if you're I mean Oracle guy, Link, Band Protocol. It's Charlie 3, which is Cardano's Link, but I don't know much. I, last time I looked at it, like, it wouldn't calculate the number, how much it was worth, because it hasn't been used. So I, I don't really, I'm not too sure about that one. Um, you know, Theta Network, Digital Streaming, another one is Divi. So, you know, just, you know if you're into, you know, just uh, wealth preservation, you know, Bitcoin. I'd say Ethereum is kind of like oil, Bitcoin's like gold. Litecoin, maybe? I mean, you know, what's, what's second best to Bitcoin? You know, maybe Litecoin, maybe. I'm not a fan of Bitcoin Cash and all that stuff. But those are jokes. And there was some Craig Wright drama about Bitcoin Satoshi, Satoshi Vision. Now, if you're someone who's just getting into crypto, absolutely do not buy anything other than Bitcoin, the OG Bitcoin. Like, what the blue is called, sometimes it's called Bitcoin Core. Uh, be careful with that. Um, but just, just Bitcoin. No other hash. Bitcoin Cash, I wouldn't mess with that. Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, there's a, there's a Bitcoin ABC too, or something. I remember that. It was sketchy. Now uh, looking at a few other ones. Internet of Things, Ontology, I think is one of those. IOTA, not IOTA, um, IOST. You know, Synthetics would be another exchange. VeChain, Supply Chain, I think Doc is another one. Not sure about that. But like uh, XRP, for instance. XRP is ISSO 20, whatever, however you call it, say it. Um, but XRP moved and XLM moved. They're both, uh, the XLM is sort of from the same team, same people. Then XDC moved. So you have those threes in your portfolio, you're probably doing pretty good because they're all intertwined. Something to think about. Let's take a quick look. Hmm, what do I want to look at here? Yeah, crypto bubbles, I see XLM, Hex, I stay away from, Casper, I don't really care much for. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Now we're still kind of really overheated with the open interest and in leveraging margin so you know part of me is thinking that we could still go down to you know the 23 to 25k level 27 28 would probably make the most short term sense like a quick quick retest there then move on into 38 to 42 which has been my levels but i just don't know i hate i hate sticking around these areas too long but about this time you know once you're around this overheated area there's just Eventually, you come on down, so I just wonder if we're going to get that. But, yeah. 
so I wish it didn't look like that. But Fear and Greed Index is still 51, so it's pretty medium, mediocre. Um, yeah. All right, so Ripple takes notice of South Korea, XRP adoption, XRP army, Shiba Inu ecosystem are blowing up. I just, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of meme coins. Doge, I think it's a decent one. SEC chairman, especially Bitcoin ETF and cryptocurrencies. I don't know about that. And there was a big legislation passed too, like um, in the Senate or legislature. I'm not really sure what it had to do with exactly, but it seemed like a positive move. So maybe we'll get some clarity soon and that'll help bring the bull market back into full swing. So, mm -hmm. Let's see if there's anything else to really talk about. Let's look at the Bitcoin. I mean, everything on Bitcoin kind of looks like it wants to make another run up. I'm not seeing anything saying, hey, it needs to pull back. I'm just not, you know. I'm not seeing the four hour. It likes recharge. I'm not seeing any divergences. One hour. Yeah, I'm just not seeing, I'm not seeing any. Pretty obvious signs of anything. So, uh, one thing I was, I did want to make a mention, like why I'm kind of like nervous about this equities market, equity markets. Let's see where I want to access this. Look at the S and P. Oh, yeah, a pretty big rejection here on the S and P and the hourly. That's, that's a fair amount of volume right there. Uh, doesn't look the best. This, this volume could continue. Yeah, it kind of broke the uh, trend line. I mean, it's just, it, this is a really aggressive move up with, with, with the equities. So I wanted to look at the weekly. I believe I was looking at the NASDAQ before. Yeah. Now, if you can give me the volume profile, we'll be looking real good. But basically, we have like major divergence occurring on the NASDAQ. This looks pretty rough, honestly. I mean, it's kind of exuberant. It's just, it's just worrisome. It's very worrisome. But I mean, we're. Uh, I mean, we're going higher, but we're kind of just like going sideways and barely really alive. I just think we're going to be getting. We're in the oversold levels. So we're going to get a big topple down. I don't know what that means. I don't know how that's going to happen. Anytime we're in these oversold areas, look what happens. We get a correction down. This it could be. This is a really strong rally. It could be something like this. I mean that that I, just, I hate to say it, but that's what I'm kind of seeing may happen. So just be be careful. Uh, last time I looked at the chart, similar. It had the volume profile and worried me is how the volume was declining. I thought it was the NASDAQ chart that I was looking at. Maybe it's this one. Yeah, it was this chart. Okay. Yeah, this is this is what was really bothering me. Now I don't know how accurate this chart's volume is, but if this is the truth, is this if this is the volume, we had all this volume here. We have zero volume but we're going up high. This thing is going down. Now we're at least going to go down like a 200 week moving average, something like, I already have one drawing, but something like this. But either regardless, like, I think we're going to go down. <laughs> it's just, it makes the most sense. And it could get ugly. That's why, that's, uh, I wish I had positive news on that. And that's what worries me about Bitcoin and all this other stuff. And the timing is kind of worrisome. So, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. But, uh, Anyways, that's my fair warning there. 
uh, hang in there. We'll, we'll check it on the markets uh, tomorrow if we can. And uh, have a good weekend. All right, peace.